Hello again, so uh, I thought today let's have a look at this Honeywell radiator valve. I've got about, I don't know, 25, 30 of these in our house and they're rubbish, basically. That's my one line review. I mean, they work when they're working. The idea is it uh, attaches onto a standard thermostatic radiator valve fitting on the radiator. And uh, by turning various gears inside here, it can operate the valve to turn the radiator on or off. It communicates wirelessly with a central controller so you can set the temperature for each room and so on. Um, so it's all very good in theory, but it's very expensive. These cost over 80 pounds each new for a little thing like this. And we've had four fail, I think already in the last three years. Uh, they just stop communicating. They start this one uh, just drains its batteries in a couple of days for some reason. Um, other ones, the display stops working. Um, quite unreliable. I think maybe you know they're, they're not in a, the greatest environment. These things. I mean, they're right next to a hot radiator, getting hot and cold cycles all the time. So maybe it's a difficult thing to design to be reliable, but. Whatever, at 80 pounds each, I'm interested to see what's inside this uh, to justify that cost, to be honest. So let's uh, get it open. There's not much in the way of visible fixings. This cap comes off. This is how you turn this dial left and right to turn the temperature up and down and set other settings, but that just pulls off. And this is where the two AA batteries go. They normally have quite a good battery life. We get well over a year out of each set of batteries uh, for the ones that are working correctly and you can see in here quite a bit of space taken up by the batteries and there's the top of a little DC motor showing through there this is the rotary encoder that the cap operates and just one screw here so I'm going to try and get that screw out first and we'll see how far we can get after that that's not going to work Uh, that screw's undone. It does feel like this central piece is kind of loose compared to the outer case now. Let's see what else we can open. There's a little hatch on the side here that try and pop that off and see what's in there. Oh okay, a little USB port. I didn't even know that was there, so for firmware updates, I assume. There's nothing in the manuals about uh, connecting Wi-Fi for any other, uh, connecting a USB for any other reason. Let's see, I think this front section is probably gonna pop off if I can just persuade it. Definitely looks like that's a separate piece there. Can we see uh, the central? I'm sure this central piece is separate from the outer case. Lots of plastic mouldings just all clipped together. I'm not too concerned about damaging this thing as it's already knackered. Fortunately, our plumbers left a whole packet of these valves behind, so they they bought too many for the installation. So when several of them started failing, we had some spares. I think I'm probably doing this a little bit destructively. So that's coming away, but. I've got a little circuit board, a little ribbon cable going to the LCD display on the front. I don't think that's the way that this is meant to come off here. Let's just pull that cable out. Okay, yeah, so that's come off. So 
that's just a small module with the um, LCD display in it. You can see the model number there, HR92UK. There's a, just a single button there which looks like that just maybe operates through that. Yeah, that button just operates that there onto this contact pad on the circuit board. What else have we got? So yeah, this central circular plate at the top is definitely a separate piece. It does. Okay, so I've uh, release that using brute force and ignorance I think perhaps that screw wasn't quite undone let's see if I can do that properly let's get myself a decent set of screwdrivers that black piece in the way. Ah, yeah, okay. That's going to wriggle out of there now. So I'm fairly sure I haven't undone that in the correct order, but... Right, now it's coming out. So now we're just left with... the motor and gearbox assembly. So it looks like the motor is only controlled from these two contacts on the circuit board, which has removed itself. So the circuit board was in here like this and has no physical permanent connections to the rest of it. It's quite an interesting design. So it's only connected via the, these gold pads here to control the motor and these two at the top to get power from the batteries. So that's quite a nice modular design. Very minimal circuit board. It doesn't use Wi-Fi, I don't know what the, uh, it's obviously some sort of proprietary radio communication system, but uh, I'm sure some of you will be able to spot the uh, communications chip on there and know what's going on. It's a bit above my pay grade. I'm not sure what this tall component here is doing, that's an unusual looking thing. There's a small plunger switch on the bottom here, which I would assume is how the device knows when the uh, motor is at one end of its travel or not, or is it? No, hang on, let's have a look. So, no, that's just telling it when it's been... So this left and right click here is what attaches the head to the valve itself on the radiator. So, and this ramp is clicking that switch. So it knows whether it's attached to a radiator or not. Awful lot of through holes on the back there. I'd quite like to get this motor out and have a look at the gearbox or whatever's in there, but that seems quite firmly attached still. What's holding that in? That's extremely firmly attached. I don't, don't, don't know if that's glued in or some sort of ultrasonic welding or one of those type of processes, but 
pretty solidly in there. There's very little depth in there between the bottom of the motor and the the output. I assume there's got to be some sort of gearbox in there. It needs a lot of torque to turn the uh, radiator valve. I think we need to get a bit more destructive. There's a little so we unclip this white piece here. Is that doing anything? There's a little white clip in the middle down the side there. So one of those on this side. It's obviously designed to be clipped together very quickly and easily in the factory and never to come apart again easily. So once again, a bit of brute force and ignorance sorted that out. Unfortunately, the uh, gearbox has now fallen to pieces, so we can't see quite how that went together. But you can see there's quite a number of gears in there. So the motor is very small, actually. I thought that motor went quite far down into this black piece, but that is actually the whole motor, what you can see there. Got a pancake motor feeding through to the white pinion there. And then there was a train of four more gears. Reducing the speed and increasing the torque. So there you have it, that's what's inside one of these valves. Is that worth over 80 pounds? Could they be made for less? I suspect they probably could. But now we know. Now we know, now we know, now we know. Um, uh, cut.